If you're using QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Enterprise with third-party applications, and if you all of a sudden started to receive a revoked certificate notification while trying to sync data between the two of them, during this video, we're gonna walk you through the steps how to update the web connector and get your data flowing correctly again. Hi. My name is Matthew Fulton, and as a cloud-based accountant, I help companies improve their efficiency and profitability through personalized trainings, app integrations, and customized workflows. During today's video, we're gonna quickly walk you through how to fix the error issue if you're receiving a revoked certificate while trying to sync data through a third-party application with QuickBooks Desktop. Now, this specific question first kind of presented itself through some of our online Facebook groups, and it led me to dive in a little bit deeper to try to find out exactly what was happening. Having experience with the web connector and how to integrate to desktop in the past, I merely went over and checked out the Intuit developer area to see what kind of information I could find. Fortunately, somebody in the Intuit developer community had already asked about this challenge. So there was a chance for, well, different app companies to be asking the same thing and for somebody to provide some feedback as to how to correct this. So through this link, when we click onto it, it gives us guidance as to what exactly we need to do. And ultimately what it requires is we need to go in and select which web connector file based on the version of QuickBooks you're using, you would click and download this file to be able to replace it. Now to go through this process, I happen to have had a uh, demo company or a sample company of ClockShark already created. So I'm using the ability to use ClockShark to sync to QuickBooks Desktop first to test out and see if we can get the revoked certificate. And then we'll actually go through, show you how to do the correction and uh, be able to show the data pushes all the way through correctly. So at this time, I've never actually done a sync with ClockShark to QuickBooks Desktop, but we're gonna do it, of course, to try to replicate this issue. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to come in and we're going to download our web connector QWC file. Now this top one that's being listed here, this is if you um, needed to download the initial web connector, you would click there, download that piece, and it's one that ends in a .215. In this scenario, I'm going to utilize the one that's already installed on the computer, and we're going to click download web connector file here to be able to go through, open it up, and start the process. So we'll come over, we'll pull up our clock shark piece here, and let's go open. So what this basically did is it's pulling up to pull in the actual web connector piece. So it's gonna ask me to authorize this information. We'll click OK. And now we're getting new details here. The certificate was revoked by its certi uh, certification authority. All right, so this is exactly what we were expecting to see, some kind of revoked issue here. So now what we're gonna do in instead is we're gonna go back and try to follow the instructions more appropriately here. I'm going to click OK. They gave me the thing saying it was not working correct. We can see this is Web Connector 2.3.0.240. So we headed back over to the Intuit web page that has all the instructions again telling us the different steps we have to take. Uh, this is, of course, telling us right off the bat that we need to make sure we've updated all of our desktop to the latest version. And then it's going to ask us to select which is the appropriate web connector file that you'll need to replace based on your specific uh, year of QuickBooks that you are using. So for me, I'm using 2021 on this specific one. So we've downloaded that. It's telling us from here we need to, we're going to close all versions of QuickBooks completely. Then we're going to do Control Alt Delete on the keyboard at the exact same time and pull up the task manager. So let's do all of that right now. We'll exit out of here, go to our QuickBooks, close our company file. And then in just a second here, we will actually close out of everything. Now we're going to control alt delete. Okay, so now we'll pull this over and what we're looking for are our QBW um, and the QBWs and QD, QBW web connector pieces. Theoretically, I should be able to go up here too, QBW. 
does a search. Okay, so we're not seeing any of those running. So we're happy there. Now it's saying to go press the Windows and your R key. That's going to get us the ability so we can enter in the following resources. So I'm on a 64 bit. Let's do that again. Pulls up another thing here. And now this wants us to find the qbwebconnect.ese file and we're going to rename this. So basically, as the instructions have said, I've gone into this folder and I found the QB web connector that already existed in here. And what we did is we renamed it to old underscore QB web connect. Uh, the key there is you're just changing the fundamental name. So it's not going to be able to try to launch that application. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and copy the one we downloaded, the new one and put it into this folder. So let me pull up my downloads here. I've got that folder here and I know I've got this specific one. Now I want to draw a quick bit of attention on onto this that whether you're using 2021 or 2022, the web connector it's suggesting to download is a 2.3.0.215. On the 2023 version, it actually goes to the 0.240. Now, in my scenario, I actually have multiple versions of QuickBooks desktop on my computer all the way 21, 22, and 23. So I had the point, uh, 0.240 before. And off camera, what I basically did, I actually went through and tried to use the uh, 0.215 version, copy, paste that in there and go through the whole process. And it didn't work for me. So... Uh, I then basically went through and tried to do some stuff like restarting the computer, use CCleaner to clear it up, and none of that stuff actually helped me get to my end result until I used the .240 version, copied that, and then put it in. So I'm basically redoing this step to show everybody. Go Control V. Have to have permission to do it. And now, so inside of here, I've got my .240. Now, on your old one, if you just hover over it like you're seeing, you would be able to see what your existing one was in there. So you may also have to use the 0 .240, even though the instructions is telling you possibly to use the other one. So from here, once this is set up, now we can go back into QuickBooks and basically run, you know, open the web connector and start this process. Now, if I come back and go web connector, there we go. So right away, because I had the 2.4 before, it was giving me some guff and not letting me open this thing up. As soon as I put it back to 2.4 on this one, it now opened that. So now let's try going add an application. Let's go back to our downloads and let's do our clock shark and go open. Okay, so now we're able to pull this back up again. We're gonna go okay Beautiful. Now that we're now we're getting this other window here, which we didn't have before. So yes, whenever this is open, uh, and I always say click that. You don't really need to by their instructions. Um, you've chosen to grant access. Done. Boom. Okay. Beautiful. So this is what we're supposed to be seeing. Now the last part it's wanting is the password portion of this, uh, which should be our clock shark password. Okay, so I went up to clock shark, got my password, so I can paste that bad boy into there. And we've got all of our other settings to match. Let's see here. So on this one, whether we want it to auto run or not, we're gonna click this off. Yes, I wanna save the password turn off the auto run so it doesn't auto populate stuff and then we should be able to um, hit update selected so now it's telling us receive request form application application progress um we'll pull up our quickbooks make sure everything's looking good there so what i've always found is it's best to have quickbooks kind of populate where you can see something and then this at this point here um, because it's going to tell you what's happening or not
Now, part of the reason I know this is I started to create my own application. I was calling Vendor Sync a while back, which was syncing data um, into QuickBooks Desktop, kind of trying to improve the bank feeds. So we can see that this now has connected completely through and worked. So we've been able to reconnect your third-party application to your QuickBooks Desktop or Enterprise, and you should be back to processing your data like normal. If you found this information to be helpful, do me a favor and take a moment to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. When we find situations like this that really require an immediate response or an immediate solution to it, we do our best to try to dive in, figure out what we can to be helpful, and post these videos, of course, on our YouTube channel. So once again, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. We hope it was helpful. And as always, here's wishing you all a very successful week.